Okay, what I want to show is go in and show you how to make the alpaca from my book. Now, I had originally made this on the 3 8 inch gauge 24 using pipsqueak yarn for the fluffiness and then um, you can use just a regular worst weight yarn for the face and the ears. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do is make a little larger one. I'm going to go to the standard that everybody uses on the 24 peg 5 8 inch gauge and I'm going to be using the Go for Faux. You may need two skeins, all right? Why not? And then I'm going to be using a thick wool that's about the same thickness, okay? Um, and uh, what you're going to do is um, we're going to make this, okay? So you'll need a 24 peg loom. You'll definitely want some stitch markers and that kind of thing, particularly when you're working with a textured yarn like this. You want that kind of thing okay so what we want to do is it says to start with the head it says to hedge 24 pegs flat textured yarn which this is your textured yarn okay and you want to draw a string cast on 24 pegs flat okay so front back front and back all right so when we get all the way to the other side we're going to work our way back okay I know it's unusual to work a drawstring cast on flat. So now we're going to work our way back. So we're going to knock that over. And this is going to be hard to see, but what really makes this pattern pop is to use a textured yarn. All right. But there's not a lot, because you're using a textured yarn, you're not going to have any special stitch patterns. You're just going to have... Um, some pretty standard knitting with a few short rows involved in there, okay? And it's not hard once you get the hang of it. And try to make it easy with stitch markers, all right? All right, so we've done our drawstring cast on. And then it says to knit for nine rows, okay? So what you want to do is you want to go in and you want to knit for nine rows. So you're just going to go in and you're going to toss bottom leg over. You're going to knit back and forth for nine rows. Okay, so pause the video, get your nine rows done, and then we'll come back and be ready to start an ear row. Okay, we're going to be changing up and doing a little bit of this and a little bit of this. It's the most complicated row on the head, okay? So go ahead and pause the video, get your nine rows done, and when we come back, we'll be ready to start the more complex area. Okay, as you can see, I've already started cross stringing together. There's my nine rows. Okay, and the next row is where you include an ear. Okay, it says to knit six. So, here we go. We're going to knit six. So, there's one, two, three, four, five. Okay. All right, it says to change yarn to the smooth yarn. Okay, I'm going to do that. Okay. And then it says don't cut. stitch markers for this. Four stitch markers. One, two, four. So we've done six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And 
the stitch markers when you're working with this kind of texture of yarn really offer some assistance with what you're doing. Kind of makes life a lot easier. So I'm going to be putting a stitch marker in the four stitches. Okay. You're going to end up bringing back up. to do is knit four. So we're going to go across and we're going to knit four. This is to increase one. So what you're going to do is you wrap the next peg. Do not touch that further. Do not touch it. See, it's not there. All right. Then it says to knit four. So one, two, three, four. Then it says to increase one. Then it says to knit five. in the original stitch on there, okay? Now, it says to knit six for six rows. Here's row one. Next it says to knit five, knit four, knit three, knit two. First row you Okay. So it says to knit five. So one, two, three, four, five. And it says to knit four. For three rows, so here's one, two, three. And it says to knit three. Okay. Next it says to knit six for five rows. Okay. So we go one. I'm going to touch that original stitch.
and it says to decrease. Take that one in. That two again. Knit two. Then decrease. And knit two. And it says to knit four for three rows. See, there is your ear. Okay. Next thing it says to do is bring original loops back. So you am bring four stitches back up in here. So I'm going to bring that back up in here. And because you did that, it should make it actually really easy. says to knit two together four times. Okay. So there's one, two, three, and four. And your ear is complete. says ear. So we're going to do the exact same thing in the next four stitches that we just did our ear. So we're going to put four stitch markers. Okay. So you're going to repeat the exact same thing you did here, right here. So you can go back in the video and do this very same thing. That you just did over here, over here. So, you're going to pause the video, complete another ear, and then after you get done with that, you're just going to knit your way to the end. Okay, so that when we're coming back, we're going to be starting on row 11. Okay, so you finish your ear, then you change back to your textured yarn, and knit your way to the end. Okay? Okay, you should see two fun little ears here. See? All right, so we have just completed row 10. And the next row we want to do is row 11. And what it says to do is to knit 16. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, says to knit 16, then it says to wrap and turn. Okay, so we're going to go behind the next peg, wrap and turn. Alright, then it 
it says to knit eight. So there's our wrap and turn. We're not going to touch it. We're going to knit eight. We're going to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then it says to wrap behind the next bit and turn. And it says to knit seven wrap and turn, knit six wrap and turn, knit five wrap and turn, knit four wrap and turn, knit four. Alright, so we're going to get it down to four. Alright, so we're going to knit one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, wrap and turn. One, two, Three, four, five, six. Wrap and turn. Four, one, two, three, four, five. Wrap and turn. Make four, one, two. Three, four, wrap and turn, and knit four. Okay, so we've just increased stitch. And this is going to make the head a little bit more roundy and bubbly on top, um, like an alpaca's head is. Okay, with the extra wool on top. Okay, so the next thing we're going to be doing is increasing our way back out. Okay, so then it says to knit four and then knit two together, knit five, knit two together. And what you're doing is you're increasing back out. Okay, so you're going to start with the peg you finished with. You're going to knit four, so you're to one, two, three, four, and you can't see it. There is two stitches there. Okay, you're going to knit two together. Okay, all right, then you're going to start with a baby finish with you. You're going to knit five. Then you're going to knit two together. Then you're going to knit six. Start with the peg you finished with. And then knit two together. Then knit seven, knit two together. Okay. Make sure we don't have any more double stitches. Okay. So it says to knit seven, knit two together. Then it says to knit. where it lifts up more on the top of the head. All right. So then what it says to do is to knit with your textured yarn for two rows. So we're just going to go in and start knitting, just normal knitting for two rows. When we come back, we'll be ready to switch back over to the smooth yarn and finish the working the face and the snout, okay? Let's go ahead and pause the video, get your two rows knitted, and then we'll switch over and uh, do the rest of the face. Okay, so as you can see here, there's our little ears. And now we're ready to switch up colors. And we're going to do a total of two more rows, but we're gonna be doing it in the smooth yarn. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to switch up colors. 
says to do now is to knit for two more rows. So go ahead and pause the video and knit for two rows. Then we'll be ready to do the next section. Okay at this point we are on row 16 in the pattern and it says to internally decrease from 24 to 12 pegs. Alright so um, what I've been known to do, you can do this in a number of ways. You can go in and decrease e row, decrease, you know, decrease knit, decrease knit, and bring all the stitches together and then tighten your stitches. Or you can do it this way, which is the way I prefer to do it. But it's entirely up to you how you want to do it. And if you don't feel like you trust using your hook, you can use a stitch holder, okay? Um, this is just uh, personally what I find is um, easiest to do. Okay. You just lift up 11 on one half and, the, and place two stitches. Okay. I'll show you how to do that. And this is kind of the hardest part of your pattern is doing the um, internal decrease. Okay, once it's done, it's done, and it really makes a big difference. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one more, and we don't even have to put it on the stitch holder. We can just move it over to the next available pack. Okay, and then all you're going to do is you're going to take it off, put it on there. Take another one off, put two on there. So you're putting two stitches on. So take that off, put two on, that off, two on. Put the next one off, and the next one off, and put it on the same peg. Next one off. Next one off. Put it on the same peg. Okay. Didn't it quite seem right. Should be two pegs on every single stitch. Now if you do this and you don't want to have to back, you can just decrease it in the next round. Okay. Nothing's an exact science with this kind of thing. You're mostly just trying to get that cinched snout area. Okay. So if you end up being off, it's okay. Work with it. Okay. Apparently I counted wrong and did not count enough. Okay, you're supposed to pick up 11 and place the 11th stitch on the 12th pick. And so somewhere in there I miscounted, but it is late in the early wee morning hours, 1 in the morning, so bear with me. Alright, okay. So you just keep picking up and putting on the stitch holder. That makes you feel more comfortable. A lot of times I'll just have the hook holding the stitches. But if you don't feel comfortable doing that, you can do this very method. And I'll probably use your mind. Okay? Okay, so you see you're there at the two. See that? So you're going to take that last stitch you just took off. And you're just going to set it on the next peg. There's two stitches there. Okay. So you need 
take this stitch on, put it down, take the next stitch off. One side will always be easier than the other when, when doing this, which is why it probably will feel more comfortable going in and doing this with a stitch over. Okay. You can just put two stitches on the area of your peg, and because we're a little off, just not a big deal, we'll fudge it on the next row. We'll get it down where it's supposed to be. Even the pros make mistakes. But I can tell you how to cheat it. Particularly when it's one of my patterns. a little off, which is okay, we can adjust it. Right. So we should be basically half peg and uh, have how many empty pegs? We should have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. See, we're one off. So what you'll do is if you end up doing like I did just by accident, not counting over you need to get it down to 12 pegs. It's easy. But what you want to do is you want to go ahead and you want to knit your way over. Knitting both stitches over, which is your internal decrease. So we're still on that internal decrease. But I'm going to tell you how to fix it. You ended up getting off. And we're only off by one stitch. I'll show you how to fix it. Not a difficult thing. It doesn't show. Alright. Okay. And then knit. Alright, so we are off by one stitch. What you want to do is pick that up. Move that over. Okay. And you just toss the bottom right there. Alright. There you go. Fixed. There are 12 stitches. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. See? Easy fix. Alright. So if you do a little food pile like that, you don't have to start all over again. But you can kind of see where the head is. See? You get the little ears. Alright. Now, what's next is you want to knit rows 17 through 20, and that is four rows. So what you want to do is you want to go in and you want to knit for four rows, okay? So four rows back and forth, right? And I personally, at this point, would start knitting the last stitch, slipping the first stitch, so that you have an easy chain to follow to sew up at the snap area, okay? So go ahead and pause the video and complete your four rows. When we come back, we'll be ready to do a nostril area, and um, we're almost done, actually, with the head. Okay, so we've done our four rows, and we're ready for row 21 which it says to knit four, and then it does says to do a nostril, where you knit two for six rows, bring original loops back, knit two together two times, and then you do another nostril in the next two stitches, and you knit four, okay? So, let's set that up, all right? So now we're gonna knit four, one, two, three, four. Then we have two stitches here for a nostril. We know they're right beside each other. Alright. So I'm just going to go ahead and place those. Alright. 
right. I placed my two nostrils right here. One and two. All right. So um, because I'm still wanting to make it easier to see how to sew up, because you're creating a nice chain here. See that chain? All right. So what you want to do is you want to get one. That slip counts as one, two, three, and four. All right, then it says to knit two for six rows. All right, so here is row one. Repeat the same thing here, and then you're going to knit yourself to the end. Now that'll complete row 21. Next thing you want to do is row 22 and 23, you're just going to knit back and forth for two more rows, and then when we come back, we'll be ready to do the drawstring bind up. So complete the next snout here, then knit your way to the end, then knit for two rows, and then we'll come back and I'll show you how to finish off the head. Okay, as you can see, there's your nose for one and two, and we've done two more rows. And now we're ready to draw string bind off. So cut you a long tail. All right. And what you want to do is I like to go on my opposite side. I finished. Toss the bottom loop over and pull through. Alright, so we're going to draw a string by now. Just to do is to sew up your snout. So what you want to do is close that off as tight as possible. And you want to sew up to here. Okay. Then it says to close the back of the head. This is where you want to finish closing it off. So just tie that off, that drawstring off. And normally I go in and I sew a little bit further down, but it's up to you if you want to do that. And then it says to stuff the head and cinch the eye area. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you if you're using safety eyes, you want to add your safety eyes first before you stuff. Then you cinch your eyes. Okay? So, what I'm going to tell you to do is go ahead and pause the video, sew up your snout, close off the back of your head, then we'll come back and I'll show you how to add any eyes. Okay? Okay, I have done that, but what I want to do is get my eyes in there. Okay. Now, I love adding eyelids. It really gives it more. And you might want to get some fake eyelashes and add because alpacas have these really beautiful long eyelashes. Okay. And so, um, what you probably want to do is go in and do what you paint over in whatever main color your 
fact it is, since mine is white, I'm going to go in and I'm going to paint over. Now, um, what I like to do and when I paint over like this is um, I like to go back with a clear fingernail polish to kind of solidify that and where it's, it stays more solid. And when you sponge it on, it actually gives a more um, smoother look. Okay. So this is just an idea. You don't have to do this. You can just add the eyes as is. Okay. Um, but this is me usually enjoying adding an extra touch. Okay. You may need to add two coats. So um, what you'll do there is you'll let it dry completely. Okay, and usually you can find a way to prop this up. Alright, so for instance, I could prop it up like that. But you want to prop it and let it dry. Okay, now if you don't want to bother with that or anything, what you want to do is you want to line it up with the ear, and then you want to find the base of the snout where you did the internal decrease. And you're going to put your, your eyes in there, okay, and then you walk that in so the other eye should go right about there, okay. Now you can do it just like this. You can see it's just as cute. These are 15 millimeter eyes. Okay, if you're wondering, all right. Um, but what you want to do is you always want to add your eyes first if you're doing safety eyes. You can add your eyes last if you so choose, um, but you want to add your eyes first when you're doing safety eyes. When you add your safety eyes, you want to add them right there at the base. Okay, and then you want to stuff the head as pretty firm as you can. Okay. So um, what you want to do is go ahead and pause the video, get your eyes done, okay, and add them in. Inner ear, go line down the base of the snout, okay, where you did the internal decrease. Clip those in, alright, and then you'll stuff your head pretty firm if you did a flatten it, okay. Alright, so pause the video, get your head finished, and I'll show you what it looks like when we're done. See, I've attached my eyes, I've stuffed my head. What you want to do is you want to cinch your eyes. Normally I do with this, but this is not the strongest of yarn, okay? So I'm having to use some scrap. But now you may be using something that's a little thicker than me, okay? So I'm using some scrap here to do this. I'm going to attach it back here. Okay, so you want a fairly long enough needle. And what you want to do is you want to, we're going to cinch the eyes in so we're going to find that outer edge. <clears throat> find the outer edge. Just dip the needle in. Come back through here. Inside, and then difference between a cinched eye and an uncinched eye. You can see it now. Okay, there's more definition to the face. Okay, now we want to do the other. Eye. As close to the edge of the eye as possible. Yeah. Okay. 
one more time to get in there and then do the inside. Try to get a sink to the inside. And you may need to go with a comb and work that fur down up so that it pops more. But there is your alpaca fit. There is your alpaca head. Okay. All right. Next, we want to go to our body. And our body is all one piece. Okay. And start off with the textured yarn. And this says to roll string cast on 24 pegs circular. Okay, we're doing our drawstring cast on. It says in the pattern to do rows one through six is a knit. So what you want to do is you want to just knit all the pegs round and round for six rows. Okay, I have done my six rows and we are on row seven. And the first thing we're going to start off doing on row seven is our legs. Okay, so what we want to look at is, it says to knit six for 18 rows, change color to smooth yarn, knit six for six rows, change color to textured yarn, knit six for 18 rows, bring original loops back on pegs one and six only. That's important. Knit two together, knit four, knit two together. Okay, so because we're working with a textured yarn, and seeing to sew up later is going to be a little difficult. I'm going to show you a trick so you don't have to sew up the leg later. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to put a stitch marker on pegs one and six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Put peg stitch marker on pegs one and six. Now. Row seven and eight are um, some more complex of your body, but not that bad. Okay, so what you want to do, and you'll probably want to get a lot of stitch markers for this. Okay, and this is my way of doing it. I do this even with the small ones, but when you're working with a textured yarn, it's good to stitch mark when you're wanting to do stuff like this. Okay, so what you want to do is just to knit six for 18 rows. So this is going to be row one. Okay. Alrighty, and then you can go up under. Which is going to be row two, okay? And we're slipping that first one, okay? So if you don't have to do this, okay? You what you can do is you can do exactly as it says: knit back and forth six for eighteen rows, change color, and knit for um, 
six rows on a smooth back to you can do it just as it says and not have to worry about this I just find that this makes it easier for later I don't have to worry about it so I'm going to put a stitch marker on that slip stitch over here okay and then I'm going to knit my way over now I've done another slip stitch here so I'm going to place a stitch marker on that end peg for a slip stitch all right now that's one and two. This is three. Okay, I'm going to go up under that stitch marker and I'm going to put another stitch marker in there. It's three. That's slip stitch. And this will be four. And you're going to keep doing this over and over for 18 rows. Okay, so I'm going to have you pause the video, toss that over, go under the stitch marker. Okay, it gives you a little bit more room to pull. You're going to slip that first stitch in the stitch marker. Okay, so that makes four. Alright, so go ahead and pause the video. 18 done when we come back I'll show you what it looks like all right and then we can move on from there okay so pause video get your 18 done and then we'll change over to smooth get the half done and then we can start adding these stitches back okay okay I've done my let's see 18 rows okay as you can see here Okay, so next what you want to do is you want to um, change color to a smooth, but don't cut your textured one because you're going to be picking it right back up, okay? And uh, what you want to do now is you want to knit over the six for six rows, but because we're adding back, you want to knit three, and then you want to start adding your stitch markers back, okay? So, I'm going to slip that first peg like we've been doing, so this is row one. stitch marker there. Alright. Okay, and this is row two. So we don't need that stitch marker because we're going to be adding back. Okay. So. Alright. So this is going to be row three. Okay. So you're going to move that over. Alright. And then we'll be doing a. You're doing this. Okay. Then we're going to be doing is adding our stitch markers back. So, yes, while you just did that one, you're going to add it back. Because this is going to be row four. This is so much easier to do in a lap. So, this is going to be row four. And when you get over here, you can knit the two together. Okay. So there's one and two to knit together. Okay. All right. Next, that's going to be row four. I'm going to add this back, which is going to be row five. What you're doing is you're giving it smaller feet because the fur yarn takes up so much volume and space this 
makes it look like they have little feet like they have. Okay. All right. So the next thing you want to do is add one more back over here. Okay. And this makes six. Okay. Then you're going to cut that smooth yarn and go right back to your fur yarn. Okay. And what you want to do is toss that over and toss that over. Okay. So then we're going to tie off that yarn. Okay. Tie it off. And then you'll be ready to start using your fur yarn again. Okay, so now you want to just keep adding back, okay? And you just find the next closest stitch marker to the peg, and you add it back to that end peg. At this point, if you're doing the other method, you're going to knit for 18 Vivi. Go find something to play with. You're going to knit for 18 rows, working your way back, okay? Find your next one, and you're going to put that onto the peg, knit your way over, knit the two together. You're going to keep doing this until you have your last two on the um, leg. So when you get to these last two, stop, okay? And then we'll go from there, all right? So pause the video. Add all those back, and then we'll go from there, okay? Okay, so we're here on this side, and you'll notice you have another stitch marker here. You can go ahead and take that stitch marker off, knit your way back over, okay? All right, so you knit your way over. Then what you want to do is add these two stitches back, which is bring your original loops back, okay, and then you're going to knit two together, as it says, so, you're going to knit two together, sorry, then knit the four in between, and then you're going to knit the two together. All right, so, looky here. I can stick my fingers in here. There's my leg. No seaming necessary. You see that? No seaming. All right, so you got one leg done. All right, so at this point, what it says to do is to knit 12. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Okay. Then it says to do your other leg. All right, you should have six stitches here, so make sure you've got six. One, two, three, four, five, six, you do. Okay, remember that you're going to be bringing original loops back on the first and last peg of the leg row, okay? So, at this point, what you're going to do is go back to the section of the leg video and do it right here, okay? And that should finish you up on row 7. Then we're going to move on to row 8. So go ahead and pause the video, complete you another leg, and remember this section of the video. Remember how you do this because it's going to come right back around when you go to do your front legs. Okay? So it's going to come right back around when you go to do those 24. Okay? So remember your legs. Alright, so pause the video, get that much done. Okay, we have completed two legs, as you can see here. Okay, so now we are on row eight. And what row eight says to do is to knit 10. So here we go, we're gonna go one, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, then it says tail. You need four, so you're going to have a B-O-L-B -B on all of them. So what you want to do is you want to put a stitch marker in the next four stitches. So there's one, two, three, and four. Next. So what it says to do is it says to knit four for four rows. So here is row one. Here is row two. Row three. I'm not having such a hard time keeping this in spec. And row four. So over just those four stitches. Okay. Now then it says to, this is where it's going to matter, um, what you may want to do to make sure that it stays separate because we're going to be increasing. Put a stitch marker over there so you know not to touch those stitches. We're going to increase. Okay. So it says to increase, which means I wrap and turn that next peg, available peg. Then it says to knit four. One, two, three, four. Okay. Then it says to increase again. Wrap around the next peg and knit five. So one, two, three, four and five. That stitch marker is there to tell you not to toss that original loop there so that you're not connecting the middle of your tail with part of your body. Okay, and that's the goal of this. All right, now what it says to do next is to knit six, four, eight rows. So you're going to knit over those six pegs for eight rows. I'll show you two and tell you to pause the video. So here's one, Pause the video and complete a total of eight rows. So that's two rows. Complete six more rows and we'll come back. Okay, after it says to knit six, four, eight rows, what it says to do is to knit five, knit four, knit three, knit two, knit three, knit four, knit five, and then knit six for five rows. All right, so here's how that works. All right, so it says to knit five. So here's one. Two, three, four, five. Then it says to knit four. One, two, three, four. Then it says to knit three. One, two, three. Then it says to knit two. So we go one. Two. Then it says to knit three. One, two, three. Then it says to knit four. One, two, three, four. Then it says to knit five. There's one, two, three, four. And five. 
And then it says to knit six for five rows. So you're going over the whole six for five rows, just like we did for the eight. Okay, so here's row one for that six. Again, I'll tell you to pause the video and complete your rows, and then we'll come back and do the next section. Okay, so there's row one. Okay. Two, three, four, five. Okay, pause the video, get that much done, and then we'll come back and I'll show you the next section. Okay, we've completed our five rows. Now what it says to do is it says to decrease. So you want to decrease that over. And it says to knit the two together. So knit both those stitches over. Then it says to knit two. It says take that in stitch and decrease over and then knit the two stitches together. Okay, then what it says to do is knit four for three rows. So here's one, two, And three. Okay. At this point, what it says to do, and you have a tail here. See that nice poofy tail? All right. So what you want to do is it says to bring the original loops back on all four. Okay. That closes off the tape. You can take all the stitch markers out at this point. And then we're fixing the work at the core of the body after you get done with the tail. And that's going to be 15 rows of just knitting in the round. Okay? Alright, so what you want to do now is you want to go in and then it says to knit two together four times. So here is one. Here is two. I know this is hard to see. Here is three. And here is four. All right. Then it says to knit ten, which means to knit to the other end. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Okay, at this point, what you should have is you have your legs right here, and you have your tail, which means this is your back end. You can go ahead and start kind of trying to pull your drawstring together, but you're probably going to be stuffing through the back end. Okay, so don't pull it too tight. All right, so there you have it, your two legs and your tail, all right? Now what you want to do is you're going to knit for a total of 15 rows. So you're going to knit round and round for 15 rows. All right. Okay, as you can see, we have our feet, our legs, and our tail, and our body. And what we want to do is you want to go back to the section of the video that showed the legs. And you're going to repeat that row exactly. So what I've gone ahead and done is I've marked my six stitches on this side and six stitches on this side. So that it's I'm ready to know where my legs are. So again, you want to go back to the section of the video that shows you how to do the legs and follow it that way. Okay, so... Here's our tail, here's our back legs, here's our front legs. So basically what we've just done is we have completed row 24 in the pattern. We're now on row 25. So here's where it gets interesting. What you're wanting to do is you're wanting to create that curved neck 
to where it goes straight up just like they do. All right. So what it says we're wanting to do is we want to knit 12 and then we want to start working flat. Okay. So here's what we do. We knit 12. We go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Okay. Now, it says you're going to start working flat, which means you're going to be working back the other direction. Okay. So, here we go. We're going to go in and we're going to start knitting back the other direction. So, we're going to go back knitting that way. All right, what it says to do now is it says to knit 17 wrap and turn. So here we go. Here's row one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. All right. Here's where we're going to go our chest area, which is going to cause that neckline to go up. All right, we're going to create that L where the neckline goes up from the body. Okay, so what it says to do is wrap and turn. So you're going to go behind that next available peg and go in front. All right, then it says what you want to do is you want to knit 10. So you're going to go 1, 2, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Then it says to wrap and turn, which means you're going to go behind that next available peg and in front. Next, what it says to do is knit nine wrap and turn. So you're going to knit nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Take behind the back of the next available peg into the front. As a wrap and turn, you should have two. You can feel them. There's one, and there's two. All right, then it says to knit eight wrap and turn, knit seven wrap and turn, knit six wrap and turn, knit five wrap and turn, knit four wrap and turn, then knit four. All right, let's go ahead and pause the video and get yourself down to knit four wrap and turn, knit four. All right. So that the next part you see is knit four, knit two together, knit five, knit two together, so forth, so forth. So go ahead and work yourself down to wrap and turn, knit four, okay? And I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, I've knitted my four. So you should have four single stitches here. You should have two here, two here, two here, two here. That should be four wrap and turns over here. And here is one two, three, four. And I know this stuff is hard to see and it is difficult to keep up with, but it is well worth it for the texturing, okay? So trust me on this, it's, it's worth it. Okay, now we want to go back the direction we came with, starting with the peg we finished with. So what we're doing is we're knitting four, knitting two together. So we finished over here on this peg, we're gonna start on that peg, okay? We're gonna knit one, two, three, four, 
knit two together. All right, then you're gonna have one start with the peg you finish with and knit your way back. So you're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, knit the two together. All right. So then it says knit six, knit two together, knit seven, knit two together, knit eight, knit two together, knit nine, knit two together, knit ten, knit two together. All right. So and then knit eleven, knit two together, knit six. So we'll come back where knit where it's knit eleven, knit two together, knit six. Okay, so that we can finish up the row and I can show you how that works. Let's go ahead and pause the video. Get your wraps and turns added back in, and we'll come back on the last wrap and turn to be added in. So it should be knit 11, knit 2 together, knit 6, which is what's going to finish the row. So we're going to start there. Okay, there we're at. We're over here. I'm going to start with the peg we finished with. We're going to knit 11. So here we go. So here's 1, 2, 3. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and it says to knit two together. And there's no comma to say to work back. Okay, and there's no comma. You just keep working. So then it's one, two, three. Four, five, six, because a comma represents a row. All right. Now, what it says to do next for row 26 is to decrease knit two together four times. Okay. So go ahead and move that over, and then knit two together. All right, we're going to do this a little differently than normal. All right, then you're going to move this one over, knit two together, which is two. Then you're going to move that one over, knit two together. We have to do it one at a time, which is three. Okay. Move it over, knit two together, which is four. All right. So that's four decreases. What you want to do now is you want to lift and move all those over. Okay. So you just want to move all those over. Okay. Then you can go in and tighten up those decreases, okay, so that you don't have any gaps. Because if you're using a regular loom, you can see those gaps. All right. Then it says to knit eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Alright, here we go. We're on a decrease again. We're going to lift up that stitch. We're going to move it over one. Alright, we're going to knit the two together. One, two. Alright, lift up the next stitch. Move it over. Knit the two together. One, two. Lift up. Move the stitch over. Knit the two together. One, two, lift up, move the stitch over, knit the two together. One, two. Okay, at this point you're going to lift those stitches up, bring them together. All right. Okay. So you're going to put them all side by side. And then you're going to want to tighten those stitches up. Okay. This is what's going to add the lift that you need 
for the alpaca neck line, okay? It's kind of an important thing, all right? So, what you want to do, go in, tighten up those stitches. Make sure they're nice and snug so that it doesn't look bad, all right? Now, what it says to do, and this is a lot of rows, is row 27 through 44. Okay, so this is knitting flat. So forty four, you're knitting for sixteen rows back and forth. Okay, so at this point. Starting with the peg you finished with, go ahead and knit back and forth for 16 rows. Okay, so pause the video, knit your 16 rows, then we'll be ready to bind off. We are almost done with this. Okay, this is the this is the finish. All right, so you can kind of see where you're at now. See, there's your front legs, there's your back legs, and there's your chest area. Okay. Just pause the video, complete your 16 rows, and we'll come back and we'll finish this up. Okay. So, we've completed our neck area, as you can see. Um, instead of it being 16 rows, it's actually 18 rows. I apologize for the miscount. Um, the problem is when you subtract the number, um, you are going to be one off because you have to physically count each row and um, it usually ends up being one off so while it says 17 if you were to subtract 44 from 27 it's actually 18 if you count it on your fingers 27 28 or 9 30 you know doing it like that um, because it does get skewed you need to make sure that you're doing the 18 rows okay um, so now that we've done our 18 rows what you want to do is you want to bind off and, and it's just a normal bind off so what you want to do is you want to knit the next peg take that stitch back one toss the bottom loop over and move it over one okay and you want to knit that next stitch take it back one toss the bottom loop over Move it over one. Now um, you want to do this all the way across. Now I will tell you, guess what? I've used one skein of this go for faux stuff. One skein of it. I've managed to basically do the whole thing with a flat knit. Now if you're doing e wrap, you're going to need two. If you're doing the if if you're doing the flat knit like I am, one looks like it's going to just come in by the skinny of teeth, okay, perfectly, all right, so go ahead and pause the video, bind off, and come back, and we'll finish this up, what that means is you're going to sew the neck up, and if you didn't do the little add-on things, you're going to sew your legs up, all right, and you're not going to stuff the, you're not going to close the back end off yet, um, it says to, but I really would like to just go ahead and stuff from neck back to the back end, okay, just as a preference. You can do it from stuffing from the neck, but um, there's certain ways that are easier, okay? So go ahead, bind off, and then we'll be ready to finish this up. Okay, so here we go. There is your tail, there's your legs, there's your neck, all right? You need to sew up your neck, all right? Now, because you're using fuzzy yarn and you have enough to actually do it, what you can do is go in and try to um, crochet, sew it together, okay? Because I don't think a needle's really going to cater to it. If you can get a needle to cater to that, good for you. All right, so I'm just going to stick this through, and you try to find the edges as much as possible, all right? Um, and 
I realize that can be a challenge because you can't see what you're doing. All right. Um, you could have always put a, a, a stitch marker in there to kind of see it, but I don't think it's really necessary. You can kind of feel your way to finding the, uh, the edges there, okay. But you want to go ahead and just kind of sew that down, okay. And I personally want to use the fur so that it blends in really nicely. Um, I love a well blended in. area here. So that's the benefit of using a textured yarn like this is that you can hide a lot of mistakes actually. Um, your object is to try to find as close to the edge as possible. All right. So there you can't even see the seam and then when you go in and you actually try to fluff it up you can be able to see it. So, yeah, that's the real benefit here. Okay, so once you do that, you'll want to stuff everything. Um, if you didn't do the method that I did with my legs, you'll want to sew those up as well. Okay, you'll definitely want to go in and do that. All right. So you want to go and you want to keep sewing until you don't have any hole. Right. I think I'm about there one more just to make sure I got it. Okay. And then what you can do is you can go in and kind of knot it you can snip that edge and then send it back on through. All right. Next, you want to stuff. My suggestion is stuff your legs first. Go through the back end. All right. Then you want to stuff the neck. You can stuff the neck through up here, but you want to stuff the neck, stuff the body, and then last off, stuff up to the butt. Then you're going to draw a string it and close it off. All right. Then we'll be ready to sew your neck on, or I mean your head on. And when showing your head on, you want to make sure that it is being sewn on facing forward. Okay, so um, let's see if I can get this far enough back. So you can see that it's sewn on like that. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video, get your body done and um, stuffed and everything, close the back end off, all right? Sew your head on, and when we come back, we'll take a look and make sure that both our ends look exactly the same, okay? Okay, so this is what you should have. There is your back end, it's all closed off, your tail, your neck is sewn up, your head is sewn on. I have sewn it on straight, um, if you want your legs to be a little closer together, you can kind of tack them closer together. Um, but uh, basically, this is your alpaca. Now, you can add some fake eyelashes to this because they have the nice eyelashes. And if you want the ears to be more um, on top of the head like they are, you can cinch those outer sections together. Okay, and that'll have them lift a little bit more. Okay, and um, the nostrils, you can sew them a little bit more down to the side. Okay, and that'll create more of the effect that you'd probably want if you're looking for something even more realistic. Um, which, if you're a big fan of alpacas, they're a pet you have a lot of, then yeah, you're probably going to want to do those slight adjustments but that is your alpaca okay that's what it should look like